We have been joking uh, many a times tonight, um, but he will fill you in on the joke, I'm sure. Um, he is a, a Finnish... Uh, Somali. You're not Somali. I'm Somali. <laughs> Uh, he's a Finnish Somali director and writer who has directed several successful shorts, including 2017's Night Thief. He is best known for the directing uh, and award-winning feature that is The Gravedigger's Wife, um, which he is also showcasing at Somali Week Festival um, across venues tonight. Tonight is actually the opening night for that, so you guys please go and see it. Round of applause. This is for you, my love. That's for you. That's, no, no, that's for Mona. Yeah, mm, no, 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 no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, two more seconds. Um, amazing. Next we have Mona Rumi, who is an a and manager at Columbia Records. She broke into the music scene at the age of 16 with a self-produced radio program and soon after went on to found music management company in Birmingham. Well done. In round of applause. In her current role, she specializes in spotting, recruiting and nurturing talent across the UK. Welcome. Next, we have Abdesi Skodaid, who is a writer, translator, and blogger. In 2017, he published uh, the book... <laughs> ...and has translated the works of Edward Said, Karl Marx, and Franz Fanon uh, into Somali. He's currently working on Somali translation of Dr. Mohammed Aden Sheikh's uh, book, Back to Mokdashu, The Memoirs of a Somali Herder. That is nothing new. Thank you so much of all for joining me. Um, welcome, firstly. Um, what I would love to open with is a question for you all, which is, what are you currently listening to, watching, or reading that's inspiring your artwork or your work? Who would like to go first? No worries. So what's inspiring me at the moment, mm, music-wise? Um, I really like Beyonce's new album. I think that's cool. Um, yeah. I know that's a bit random, guys. But no, it's not random at all. What, what, what do you like about the, the album? What is it? Just it feels good. Yeah? Yeah. Feels good in your soul? Yeah. Great. That's why. Um, so, yeah, what else am I really inspired by at the moment? I think just life, really. Yeah. Um, the people around me, my job. Um, yeah. I find inspiration in everything, so. Amazing. Yeah, that's me. Amazing. Hello. <coughs> um. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So, um, yeah. I am um, watching old African films by uh, uh, Osman Sembene and also Jibril Diop Mamti, and uh, just to get an idea of what African um, history, cinema history was like. So, I'm watching a lot of African films. Amazing. Yeah. Cool. So, I'm a, I'm a translator and a writer, so words inspire me. Yeah. Words from all over the place. Words from all over the people. Uh, from all of the ages. Mm -hmm. From all of all of the dictionaries and so in in a word, word. Work is inspiring you. Yeah. Amazing. And today on this panel, we're going to kind of interchange between English and Somali. Um, so sometimes we'll translate, sometimes we'll leave it as it is. <laughs> um, the next the part of the panel we're going to now discuss is the intersection of tradition and modern Somali art forms and how each of these artists actually kind of mold, that, yeah, mold their culture and their current life into their art form. Um, let's start with Muna. Oh <laughs> yeah. How do you, how do you kind of in, uh, find that transition between your culture and your art form, how do, you, how do you see that showing up? I think, well, it's something that we have to deal with every day. It's a bit obvious. I'm a Somali woman, I'm a hijabi in a white corporate company. Mm -hmm. um, and especially because there's not many black people in these kind of companies and women especially and stuff like that. So it can be a bit challenging at times, but I think um, it's a good thing, you know, at the same time, like, uh, at, there's still advantages to it because I feel like if I wasn't a Somali hijabi Muslim woman, yeah. maybe I wouldn't have got as further as, as I have in yeah. my industry. Do you know what I mean? It's kind of been an advantage. Yeah, round of applause for that. So, yeah. yeah. There's no one like me. Like, yeah. Not to show off, not to show off. Hey, show off. Like That's me. what we're here for. Shine light on you. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Amazing. Gentlemen? So, can I go for it? Yeah. yeah. 
I think the theme of the year is very interesting because for me as a translator, because translation, I, I see translation as a bridge between the traditional and modern form of art. Uh, to start with, the Somali society is in transition. We all know that the way people express themselves was in the old days mainly based on the, and using the uh, traditional forms of art, chiefly the orality of man's or poetic art. But today we are celebrating the 50th anniversary of October 21st, 1972, the day the Somali language got its official script. Uh, 50 years after, uh, or half a century, we have witnessed a great shift towards writing. Even the poets like the late Hadrawi, uh, used writing to at least conserve their uh, verses, if not to compose them. So what this means for the great societal reality, I think I argue that translators as writers can contribute to as a contention to negotiate between the traditional and modern forms of art by revitalizing the former and enriching the latter. We as translators are agents of both the source language and the target language. So we, can, we can't be dubbed as the only good double agents. So, and, yeah. and we, are, we, are, we, are, we are a monumental bridge that connects the past, the present, and hopefully the future. So, as I said before, we deal, deal with words, these tiny, fine creatures we call words. Translators try their best to make sure the exact contextual meaning of that word. You ask yourself some seemingly basic yet fundamentally deep questions about the word in question. For example, what is it? Or why is it used? How is it used? Uh, the context and historical background of the word, the cultural and ideological aspects of the word, the very nature of the word, it is, it is epistemological etymology, the relationship between the word and the author of the source text. By going this, through this rather sophisticated process, you can successfully manage to get the corresponding words in the target language. So here, here where, where the enriching aspect of the modern art form comes in. Yeah. When, when, when you are trying to get the corresponding words between the, the, the target language and the source language, you are really doing, a, as, you, you, are, you are acting as a bridge. Mm. So, and the idea of translation is becoming more and more familiar with the Somali readers' collective psyche since the publication of the first uh, uh, as far as I know, the first Somali edition of Chitka Romari uh, Falsafat Darunta in 1977, translated by Muhammad Mahmoud Abdul Munkal, uh, which was a summarily translation of two books on philosophy in Russian. Our Somali translation is shelf in our libraries, has become more and more increased both in quantity and quality. And during the last decade, and you know that in 2011, this Somali Week Festival had it is as it had translation as it is a theme. Uh, the more, the, uh, we are driving towards translation as a modern art in an unprecedented, fast and fury-like speed. Why translate? One can ask. Why not? One can reply. Thank you so much. Wow. <laughs> I have so many questions for you, but okay. <laughs> I will be here for you. Oh, definitely. <laughs> I mean, you, you can't be that information. Um, I was recently in, in, in Africa where I spent um, two months, and uh, I was spending a lot of time at those spots where, you know, older Somali uh, men gather around, you know, to drink tea and, you know, share information and talk. And uh, it was an incredible experience because I got to gain a lot of information, a lot of history, you know, uh, you know about these um, individuals. And uh, so I'm always, you know, listening. I'm always observing. Um, I'm always talking, you know, to people. So I, I get, you know, a lot through that. You know, that that's my main, uh, you know, uh, uh, source of. of 
of connecting this uh, two together. Amazing. Yeah. We all spoke about, um, each of you have spoken about essentially like taking what it you started, whether it's Muna and take, looking herself and what makes her unique, whether it's Abdelaziz who, you know, takes a language, or whether it's Khadr who takes what he sees and puts it into cinema. So we, there is a source, there is a location, and I actually really enjoyed what you said, which is, you know, the source and then the target, and, you know, that moving target and that language is target. Um, for me, it's, it's movement, isn't it? Like, we're constantly moving, we're constantly evolving. And a question comes to mind for you always, if we're constantly moving, constantly evolving, how do you see your artwork evolving over time? Or how have you seen, actually, your artwork evolve over time, individually? From maybe when you started your short films, what, to now your feature, have you seen a transition of the, what you take as inspiration versus what you take as inspiration now? Uh, of course, you know, because as a human being, I'm always growing, you know, each day, you know, I'm, I'm you know, I wake up as a different person, you know, I, I'm always, like I say, you know, I'm changing, I'm evolving, I'm always experiencing things that I haven't experienced yesterday. And, and uh, you know, it's with those, you know, elements that I grow, you know, uh, that helps me, you know, first to change as a human being, and then through that, you know, um, um, evolve and, 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 and the art. And, uh, yeah, and, and that also helps you see things from a different perspective, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I think that's Amazing. What about you, um, Mona? Have you seen, obviously, you yourself, you're a hijabi woman, you started. Did you see that there's a shift in where you take inspiration from uh, when you started versus where you take inspiration from within the culture now? Yeah, definitely. I think more as well, as I've gone older, I think yeah. um, that plays a part more. Like, you, you get inspired by your culture, a lot of things, do you know what I mean? So definitely, for sure, I, I do feel like that, that is the case. Amazing. And for you, Abdelaziz? Of course, because we as humans are constantly in transition. Mm -hmm. and, and, and when you are dealing with a world that is in transition, mm -hmm. worlds that are in transition, mm -hmm. you definitely, uh, uh, it's, it's a reflect. It's reflection. You you will become a reflection of the work you do. Mm. So we you grow, and I grow as my work grows. That that, that that's what, what actually happens. And for example, when when, when I have started uh, officially started translating stuff and and and, and, and writing in Somali, it was. Back, 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 back in 2015, 16, and, and now, when, when I compare the two, I can see that I have that I've grown very evolutionary, yeah. if, I, if I can use the word. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, that, thank you so much. And what strikes me is there seems to be a core inspiration from all of you. Can you name a part of the culture or uh, part of uh, your life that has like made a huge impact. That it's you know that's the cornerstone of like that's where I take all my inspiration. For me, example, I take a huge inspiration from Somali fashion. I enjoy um, seeing um, how we we dress, how we present ourselves in every day, and that's where I take my inspiration from daily. <coughs> For you guys, what how do you what is the cornerstone of the inspiration, or is there is there a breadth of things? I, anyone feel free. I think for me, it's Somali women because I feel like we're just very strong. You know. Yes. I mean, we're like yeah I feel like we all just take inspirations from our mothers you know yeah. and our mothers yeah. are like strong ladies and stuff so I feel like that's for me like that Somali woman in me like strikes through you know like mm. Somali woman in me strikes through so that's that's me personally amazing I think well the greatest inspiration in my life is actually I'm, I'm with Mona although we don't share the same mother we share the same uh, identity. Mm -hmm. So my mother is the greatest inspiration uh, in my life. Not only uh, that, 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 that she is my mother and she's, uh, she has uh, if, if right to be respected. No. She's uniquely inspired me. She has uniquely inspired me 
to think freely, to think freely, to think of myself as myself. And that, and that is what driving me to this day and, and hopefully to the, to the future. Amazing. Yeah. So I will say thank you, mom. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm always inspired by my surroundings, um, by the people that I hang out with, mm. um, the people in my life. Um, every film that I have created um, so far has been inspired, I've been inspired by conversations that I've had with my family members, with my uh, close friends, with my colleagues. So, um, I, I believe that you cannot force inspiration, you know, it, it has to come to you, you know, yeah. organically, you know, and, uh, and I, I never go around or like I never, you know, think about, um, I never go around to think about what to write about next, you know, or like force myself. So, um, I'm, like I said, I'm always observing. I'm always open, you know, to, to my surroundings and listening and, 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 you know, that's how I get uh, inspired. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much. Hoya Ma'an plays a huge part in Somali Week Festival. We and I 100% back that. Um, our parents have done an incredible amount for us um, to be where we are today. And I just want to give a round of applause to both the mum and the dads in the room. Um, you know, I think for me, it's uh, something that's become very uh, prevalent in this conversation is that, and even backstage, we all have very different cultures in terms of we have Somali culture, but we also have cultures that we have grown up in. For me, it's the UK, um, which is why my Somali is not great. We'll talk about that later. Um, and for you guys, I can see there's multiple different languages that also play in part, and also countries that you might have visited. How does um, where you've lived or where you've visited and potentially additional languages um, have like supported or actually potentially hindered your art form? Can I go for it? Of course. Yeah. Go for it. The I translator's think... like, I'm ready. <laughs> I think every single word, every single language that I, I, can, I can speak of, I can read about it with it, and I can listen, mm. has contributed a lot into my translation efforts, to my tra translation process. Mm -hmm. For example, if I get a book that is about to be translated, which is in English, for example, I, I also can read in Arabic, so I used to search for and Google for and, and also and search for the Arabic translation of that book, if any. So the, the greatest news as a translator is that it is available. When, when it says the Arabic translation of the book you are looking for is available. So because when you are reading in, in one language, you are living in one life. But when you are reading more than one language, you are living multiple lives in multiple universes. So, and that, and that, and that has it is impact on my work as translator and writer and stuff. Amazing. What was the question again? <laughs> uh, so the question was, how does either by being bilingual, living in multiple countries, growing up in different countries, also contribute to uh, your art form, or essentially not contribute, potentially? Uh... Yeah, I feel like your environment, the, the languages, all of that it subconsciously influences you in a way. Do you know what I mean? I'm from Birmingham, so it's the smallest city to London. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's completely different to London. So, yeah, that inspires me as mm. well. So, yeah, I feel like it plays a part, definitely. And I only speak two languages, only Somali and English. That's, that's more than most, <laughs> so. I definitely speak Somali better than you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was a random applause on that one. <laughs> Um, I think what I'd love to know is obviously you said Birmingham is a smaller city. Like, what what do you take from Birmingham specifically? What is it that you you think this is what Birmingham is, or this is what London is, and, and the distinguish between the two? Um, 
I would say like Birmingham's a bit more like it's just boring. It's quiet. It's chilled. We're in the middle of. Is anyone from Birmingham, Birmingham here? Um, <laughs> so I just feel like it's different to London. I feel like London, there's like so much culture. It's the main city, right? It's the capital yeah. city, so it's a bit different. But I think Birmingham's just a bit more chilled, relaxed. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, there's Somali community there as well, who are very conservative. Yeah. So yeah, I think Birmingham's just Birmingham. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Birmingham to Birmingham. Hello. Um, Mona has already said what I wanted to say, but I will add this that um, your environment, you know, plays a big part in shaping who you are. And uh, I, I spent more than half of my life in Finland, and. Um, it hasn't been easy growing up in there, but you know, I I somehow found a way to to get the best out of the Somali culture and also get the best out of the Finnish culture, and then combine something that. Um, that